past two weeks, you've been reading about a bad brag. Today, I consider myself the luckiest man on the face of the earth. That I might have been given a bad break, but I've got an awful lot to live for. Thank you. Baseball is more than a game in America. It is our pastime, a special bond between fathers and sons, and a uniting force for our country during some of its darkest hours. Only a month after one of the darkest days in American history, 9-11-2001, President George W. Bush used Game 3 of the 2001 World Series to bring our nation together the way it always has been, through baseball. Please direct your attention now to the area in front of the pitcher's mound for tonight's ceremonial first pitch. And please welcome the President of the United States. What happens when this beloved pastime becomes corrupted, when some of its brightest stars and role models look for shortcuts to fame and records? Analog steroids are a prescription drug which can be taken in a variety of forms, such as pills, injections, and creams. This type of steroid increases testosterone levels, which helps users of the drug get stronger in a short amount of time by not only increasing the body's ability to produce muscle, but also decreasing the ability of the muscles to break down. Despite this positive effect of steroids, the negatives are far greater. Some of these negative results of taking this drug include stunted growth in teens, liver tumors, unpredictable and sometimes very aggressive behavior, and development of characteristics of the opposite sex, such as male breast development and facial hair for women. Perhaps the greatest negative contribution to steroids is its abuse in sports, most notably baseball. On January 20, 2004, in his last State of the Union address during his first term as the Commander-in-Chief, President George W. Bush, part owner of the Texas Rangers, discussed the abuse of steroids in sports and the effect it has on the youth of America. Uh, I think it's best that all of us not jump to any conclusions on individual players' name, but we can jump to this conclusion. that steroids have sullied the game. Although only a short section of his speech, the message was clear and powerful. He called out all parties involved in the situation, from team owners to players, and pleaded with them to take the lead in bringing a stop to this dark and corrupt era in sports. And my hope is that uh, this report is uh, a part of putting the steroid era of baseball behind us. In 2005, the House Committee on Oversight and Government Reform did an investigation on the abuse of steroids in baseball. Notable players who were questioned by this committee include Mark McGuire, Rafael Palmero, Kurt Schilling, and Jose Canseco. While many athletes denied steroid use, or to quote Mark McGuire, I am not here to talk about the past, Canseco, acted exactly the opposite. He was very cooperative, admitting to steroid use as he had done so before in his book Juiced. In this tell-all book, Canseco not only admitted to using steroids, but also implicated other players in taking the drug. In his 2005 testimony, he gave his thought process into taking this drug, discussing the pressures of performing at high levels to win and please the fans. He encouraged parents to become more involved in making their children aware of the dangers of steroids and called out the MLB several times for their ignorance on the topic. He closed his testimony with this paragraph, a feeling shared by many people around the country. To those players who have been thrust into this debate, I simply ask them to tell the truth, as I have told the truth, to join with me and help to resurrect the sport we love from where the owners and union have let it go. Perhaps the greatest cause of a new policy towards steroid use was the publishing of the book Game of Shadows in 2006. Written by reporters Mark Fanaruwada and Lance Williams, this novel blew the lid off the scandal and mystery surrounding the investigation of the Bay Area Laboratory Cooperative, more formally known as Balco. Wada and Williams go in detail on the abuses of Balco and owner Victor Conte, their downfall, 
and the allegations surrounding Conte's involvement with superstars Jason Giambi and Barry Bonds. More important about this book, however, is the effect it had on MLB Commissioner Bud Selig. After reading this book, Selig decided that a final investigation was needed. To complete this task, Selig hired former Senator George J. Mitchell. In December 2007, Mitchell completed his investigation and released it in a document popularly known as the Mitchell Report. The Mitchell Report was released on December 13, 2007 and immediately caused a great deal of controversy. The report was comprised of several different sections, like past MLB drug policies and specific incidents involving steroids. Perhaps the two most significant sections were the list of players accused of taking steroids and suggestions to Commissioner Bud Selig on how to handle the matter. In total, 89 players were named by the report, some of who were at the time among the stars of the game, including Roger Clemens, Gary Sheffield, Miguel Tejada, Eric Gagne, and Barry Bonds. Instantly, these players' reputations and legacies were tainted, and for some of them, so are their Hall of Fame chances. Along with this list of names, Mitchell provided Selig with a list of suggestions to improve the drug policy in the MLB. Mitchell included 19 recommendations in his report, highlighted by his call for an independent overseer for drug testing, an increase in educating players in use on steroids, enhanced drug testing, and an increase in drug tests during the offseason. Mitchell stated that over 700 witnesses were interviewed during the investigation, including 550 people who were in some way directly involved in baseball. Two sources in which Mitchell received several key pieces of information were former trainer Brian McNamee and former bat boy Kurt Randumski. Randumski supplied Mitchell with evidence such as mailing receipts and checks from players. Equally as important were accounts from McNamee about supplying Clemens with steroids and HGH and injecting Clemens teammates of nine years, Andy Pettit, with HGH multiple times. Such detailed testimonies like these, along with the help of federal investigations, allowed Mitchell to compose such a thorough and revolutionary report. In 2005, the MLB established a program for suspensions of players who tested positive for steroids. Under Mitchell's suggestion, this policy, which calls for a 50-game suspension for first-time offenders, 100 games for second-time offenders, and a lifetime ban on a third strike, did not change. However, as part of the new policy, which was enacted in 2008, Many of Mitchell's suggestions were included, and baseball has started to return back to a state of glory. The drug testing program was given to an independent overseer, Dr. Brian Smith, and the amount of tests he is permitted to give were raised to an average of three a year per player. To address the need for greater education about drugs and proper strength and conditioning training, Smith is required to release an annual report regarding the topic. The MLB will also contribute to the increased awareness of drugs and strength training by using players to educate youth and parents about the negative effects of performance-enhancing drugs, as well as a yearly donation of $200,000 to an anti-drug organization by the Players Association. Shortly after the release of the report, other sports followed the lead of baseball and increased the severity of their drug programs. In 2008, the Kentucky Derby banned the use of anabolic steroids in horses, and any horse who is given the steroid under certain conditions must wait 60 days until racing again. Less than a year after the Mitchell Report was published, Major League Soccer handed out its first suspension for steroid use when two New York Red Bulls players received 10-game bans for testing positive. Likewise, the National Football League has attempted to make stricter policies. During the 2010-2011 season alone, nine players were suspended for the use of performance-enhancing drugs. The stress placed on the decreasing steroid use in high schools and colleges by players like Kurt Schilling also translated to the report. Following the report, it was announced that drug testing would extend to the top 200 prospects in the amateur draft, with all teams being notified of any positive tests. Any player who refused to submit themselves to the drug test would then be declared ineligible for the draft. Not all of the effects on youth have been positive. Donald Hooten, whose son died as a result of roid rage, called out any player who has taken steroids, stating that when they take the drug, they are not only affecting themselves, but everyone who looks up to them. Although many negatives remain, the Mitchell Report revolutionized both the public reception and regulation of anabolic steroid use in professional sports. me up with some steroids make my muscles grow big i need more homers and rbis help me hit more than the rest of the guys and it's stick 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 with the needle till 